Welcome to the third video for week number 16, the last week before Christmas. Hopefully you guys are getting excited for Christmas, but before you get too excited, I, we figured we had to give you some solving whys and graphing these equations as well. So if you notice, there are six steps on your screen right now. Okay? Doing these in order is very important because the, the first one says that we want to determine if the equation represents a diagonal line, a vertical line, or a horizontal line. So each one of these has a specific type of equation. A diagonal line, we always want to think about our y equals mx plus b, which I know you are all saying in your head right now is slope-intercept form. Every diagonal line that we go with will have slope-intercept form with it. A vertical line has a specific type of equation as well. So hopefully you are thinking again now, what does a vertical line have? It is an x equals and then some type of number. We're not sure what type of number it is. The last one, the horizontal line that we have. Then the only other one we have left is a y equals and then a number. Okay. Step number two is actually what the last video that you watched was all about. It's solving for y. Or on the certain cases where we have a vertical line, we are going to see solving for our x. Step number three, we want to identify the slope and the y-intercept. Well, hopefully you remember that the slope is your m. The y-intercept is your b value. Fourth step is we want to plot the y-intercept. We do, do not just want to write y equals 3 because that means could mean that you're talking about a line. So when we talk about a y-intercept, make sure you have your point 0 and then your b value, whatever that y-intercept actually is. Step five, count the slope. I know what everyone loves to do is rise over run, so make sure you don't forget to do your rise over run. And last, probably the most important one, is connecting the points using some type of straight edge. So now that we have all the steps, let's do some of the examples here. So the first step, we had said that hey, we need to determine if this line is going to represent a diagonal, a vertical, or a horizontal line. So you should see that it has a y and x in it, so we know it's going to be some type of diagonal, which means that we need to get this in slope-intercept form. So what else is on the same side as our 5y right now? You see that we have a 2x. So we need to subtract that 2x from both sides of our equation. On the left-hand side, we're left with our 5y. That's equal to our negative 2x plus a 10. Last but not least, undo multiplication division. So we divide every single term by 5. That leaves us with a y that's equal to a negative 2 fifths x plus 10 divided by 5. Once I take my shoes off so I can count, make sure I got it right, is a 2. So now we have our slope-intercept form. What does all this mean? We now have to label our m. Our m, or our slope, is the number that is associated with our x. So we know that our slope is a negative 2 over 5. Our y-intercept, or our b value, is going to be a 2. We don't want to write it as a 2. You want to write it as an ordered pair, so a 0 and a 2. So now this is the new step here. We have to graph this. First, graph your y-intercept. We just found out that our y-intercept was a 0 and a 2, so make sure you run the y-axis and plot 2. From that point, we need to go down 2 units because it's negative, and then we go 5 units to the right because we had a positive. That is our second point. If you want to, you can do that again. You go down 2 over 5, so you have another point, and this is where you would use your straight edge and connect each one of these points. That is a horrible, horrible line. Your lines will look much, much better. So on to the next problem here. Again, we have a y and an x in our equation. So we know we are going to have a diagonal line. So that means, again, we need to get this into slope-intercept form. So let's subtract 4x from both sides of our equation. When you bring the y down, don't forget to bring the negative sign down as well because now we have a negative y that's equal to a negative 4x plus 3. We aren't quite done yet because we still have a negative 1 that's in front of the y. So we need to undo that multiplication by dividing every single term by a negative 1. So you end up with a y that's equal to a positive 4x minus a 3. Now that we have our slope-intercept equation, let's find our slope and our intercept. Our slope is the number that's in front of our x, so it's a 4. We know that our y-intercept is going to be a negative 3, or if we write it as an order pair, which we're going to, it's going to be a 0 and a negative 3. 
So we first graph our y-intercept. We have a 0 and a negative 3. So from that point, we need to go up 4. But remember, every time that we go up 4, we can't just do 4. We need to also have a run. That run, if there is no number, is going to be a 1. So we go up 4 over 1 to the right, up 4 over 1 to the right. We use the points and connect them so we have our nice straight line. On to number 3. With number 3, everything is on the same side of our equation right now. So again, we want to try to get y by itself. We are going to see that we have, a, again, a diagonal line because we have a y and an x and a number. So again, let's give it in the slope intercept form. So we have that y. If the y we're trying to get by itself, let's do that right away. Let's subtract that 4y from both sides because now the y is away from everything else. So we're left with a negative 3x plus 16. That's equal to a negative 4y. Now we need to undo our multiplication. Divide each term by a negative 4. We want to make sure we leave that 3 fourths as a fraction because that is our slope. So we have a 3 fourths x minus a 4 that is equal to a y. Now because us algebra teachers are extremely picky, let's write it so it looks like a regular slope intercept equation. So now we have a y that's equal to a 3 fourths x minus 4. So when we label our slope, we know that our slope, rise over run, is going to be our 3 over 4. Our y-intercept is going to be a negative 4, which means our point is a 0, negative 4. We go to our graph. We plot negative 4. From that point, we go up 3, and we go over 4 to the right. Again, up 3, over 4, and we have three points. Let's connect those three points to make a nice straight line with arrows on the end of it. Last, but most certainly not least, we're getting our x's that are trying to be by itself right now. So how do we get an x by itself? We know that we are going to have now a vertical line because you don't see a y right there. The only variable that we have is our x. So we need to get that negative 2 away from that x. How do we do that? Oh, I can hear your answer. So we want to add 2 to both sides. So we end up with an x that is equal to a 7. So now we have a vertical line. A vertical line is going to have what type of slope? undefined slope. We know that the vertical lines always have an undefined slope. And what is our y-intercept? Well, let's, before we answer this question, let's graph it. And x equals a 7 means that every single point on here that we're going to graph is going to have an x value of 7. We already know it has to be a vertical line, so hopefully as you draw your graph, you're not seeing a y-intercept. Vertical lines or equations that are x equals anything will not have a y-intercept. Thank you for watching our last video, and have a merry, merry Christmas. Bye.